today's message. Praise God. For those that will be seeing it on YouTube, through uh, Facebook, and some of the other outlets. But today's message is a very important message for today and for the weeks to come. We're about to experience change in our lives as a result of change in many facets of government and administration. So there is change coming in the natural world. Do you agree? It doesn't matter who you're for, change is going to happen. Now, I want you to write this title down, and those of you that are viewing me and seeing it and hearing me, I want you to put it down because I will have a subtitle with it, but the main title that I'm flowing from for the next few weeks on the Sabbath is coming under the covering of God. Amen. Coming under the covering of God. Now I know that many of you who believe that you are already under it, I know that you may think there's no more to learn, but that's not true. The reason why this is a timely message is because of where America is going to. You need more than ever before to know how, to know when, to know what to do, to know why to do it, to keep yourself under the covering of Almighty God. Under the covering of the Almighty, we're going to read once again some of the scriptures that are so familiar with us. Under that covering, we found some things that God will do for us. One, he'll protect us. He'll give us divine protection. Number two, he will supply all of our needs. One, he will give us divine protection. Two, he will supply all of our needs. Number three, under his covering, he will give us favor on every hand. People will have to deal with you differently than even they want to because God places favor over those that are under his covering. You can, you can say amen. amen. I know you're writing, and I'm going, I'm going to review with you what I'm going through. Number four, when we're under the covering of God, we fulfill our purpose and our destiny. When we're under the covering of God, I'm saying it again, we fulfill our covering and our destiny. Can you hear me? Amen. Number five. When we're under the covering of God, the angels of God encamp around about us to help us in all our endeavors. They encamp around about us because we are under 
God's covering. Now, I thank God for that because there are some things that the angels of the Lord know about your future that God has specifically revealed to them and they are anxious to help you fulfill it. Hallelujah. I mean, working, steadfast soldiers. Are you getting them? Where am I at now? Number six, when you're under the covering of God, the wealth of the wicked will find its way into your hands. I plan in my series of teaching to touch on every one of these. When you're under the covering of God, the wealth of the wicked will find its way into your hand. One more. I want to give you seven to complete it. When you're under the covering of God, and please get this, Jesus will become your best friend. And through him, I'm going to preach it, you will experience God's love like you have never known it before. Yes, sir. Jesus will become your best friend when you're under the covering of Almighty God. Now, I'm only going to give you seven today, and praise God, as I preach, when I call out the number, you're going to give them to me and praise God. I'm going to connect something with it that really blesses me. And I've got several scriptures to give you. So I want you to go to Exodus chapter 17. Exodus 17. We're talking about today what? coming under the covering of God. Now, I know you know that when we're under the covering of God, that his glory is in our lives and his kingdom comes, his will is done more than ever before. Aren't you glad that in spite of yourself that God is still perfecting his will through you? Aren't you glad that no matter how much the flesh tries to raise his head, that God is still perfecting his glory through you. Aren't you glad? I, I, I know this morning that you, you, you really look like that, that mighty man and that mighty woman of God, and you should because that's who you are. But I also know that there are some days that you may not cross every T, dot every I, and still, because I'm under God's covering, he still perfects my path, leads my way, keeps me safe, keeps me protected, keeps my loved ones protected, and he causes me to mount up with wings like an eagle to run and not be weary, 
to walk and not faint. Because I'm under his covering. If you, uh, I'm going to give you this. I grew up when I was a, a, a small lad and wasn't even a teenager, but I grew up in an area in our little town, Madisonville. I grew up in the country. And on our little plot of land that we had, we had some chickens. And uh, we had a whole lot of mother hens and a rooster. But I noticed something that would happen. Whenever a storm would approach the property, the hen would gather her little chicks and bring them underneath her and cover them to where you couldn't even see them. And what she was doing, I want you to think about what God builds within us to reveal himself to us. What she was doing she was covering them with her feathers, protecting them so that if anything flew through the air and was coming at her little chicklets, they would have to hit her first because they were under her covering through this series. Through this teaching, if you don't know anything about the covering of God, you're getting ready to be blessed above measure. If you know about the covering of God, you are going to be blessed even more because you're going to be able to See it in a way that you've never seen it before. I want to I wanna tell you this. I, when I go to Exodus 17 today, I want to tell you something. I'm using this first one because there's one thing that you have to connect when you teach on God's covering. There's one big thing that I have to teach you. I have to teach you about his name because his name reveals what he's doing in your life every day. When I call out a name because you've been around the word, you know these terms. For example, this morning, we're going to see a name that gives us understanding of the covering of Almighty God. We're going to look at Jehovah Nisi. What does it mean? The Lord, my banner. Jehovah Jireh. The Lord, my provider. Jehovah Rapha. The Lord, my healer. El Shaddai, the breasty one, the God in actuality that is more than enough. You know, when I was, when I was studying it, I found out that titles, terms, and names associated with God throughout the Bible, now these are not just those names, but many other ones, there are literally hundreds of names. But you, but you do remember that when God would reveal himself to the Israelites, he would call himself by a name. That name began to register in their hearts so much 
that they knew that the Lord, my banner, means more than having cloth flags or posters. It meant the Lord is my banner, meant the Lord is my covering. Oh, y'all got to get this. Jehovah Nisi means more than just a banner. Because how many of y'all know that sometimes a banner might not be enough to protect you for what you're going through? So you need the full revelation of what Jehovah Nisi. I'm going to start there. But I'm going to show you in a way that's different. I'm going to start with verse 1. What had happened was you're going to see that the children of Israel, they've seen God's hand, but they still doubt him. So here we come to a place this morning in verse 1. And I, I uh, look at this as the way that church operates. And the congregation of the children of Israel journeyed from the wilderness of sin. After their journeys, according to the commandment of the Lord, and pitched in Rephidim. But look at the last part. Read it out loud. I got, a, I got this. Why would God lead them to a place where there was no water for them to drink? And why does it seem like in our congregation sometimes that all of the provisions that we need seems like is drying up? What is God really doing that's good I've got to know what God is doing I just can't take it that God is doing it I got to know why God is doing this so where does God lead them he leads them to a place where there is no water and I want you to watch the response of the people Wherefore the people did chide with Moses and said, the understood subject in this verse is, you give us water that we may drink. And Moses said unto them, why chide you with me? Wherefore, do you tempt the Lord? Why, Moses is saying, why are you murmuring against me? Well, I want you to think. Now, here they are, masses of people. They're in a place where there is absolutely no water. Instead of the people telling Moses, whatever God tells you to do, we receive it because we trust him. Why is it when things don't go just like we want them that the first thing that we do is murmur against God? Amen, lights. Preaching good, Brother Jerry. Amen, Brother Jerry. I've watched it. As long as the bills are paid, as long as there's money in the bank, as long as things are working out right, people, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. The first time that things don't work out 
like they think that they should, they don't murmur so much against God. They murmur against his leaders. Huh? It's easier to murmur against the leaders. Man, ain't, a, ain't no anointing over here. I don't know what I'm going to do. I need the anointing. So-and-so ain't got no anointing. First thing that many do is they murmur against leadership. Stay with me. This is a long story, but you got to get it. Verse 3. And the people thirst there for water. And the people murmured against Moses and said, Wherefore is this that thou hast brought us up out of Egypt to kill us and our children and our cattle with thirst? Do you hear what they're saying? Is this what you brought us from Egypt to experience and Moses did what every leader should do when they don't know what to do hallelujah he cried unto the Lord hallelujah ain't no need ain't no need to get mad at the people leaders leaders Ain't no, ain't no need to blame others. Cry unto the Lord. Go to who's got water. God's got everything. It never runs out. And Moses cried unto the Lord, saying, what shall I do to this people? They be almost ready to stone me. Yeah. What, Moses? A little while ago, they were rejoicing. But now they're ready to kill you. You know what you, know you got to accept in leadership? You got to accept the good. And the bad. You got to accept when they love you. And when they detest you. You got to accept when they love that song. And I don't feel no anointing on that song. You got to accept when everything is working. But when nothing is working. Let me help you understand why this is so important and why it is so important with the covering of God. There's going to be many changes in your life. You've got to be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in God's work for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain. I tell people this. If I can only praise God when all is working, it ain't much of a praise. God hears my praise when I sing hallelujah when the storm is raging. Let me carry you on with me. Because I'm going somewhere. Moses is going to be asked to do something by God that is going to be a different way to get water. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go on before the people. Take with thee of the elders of Israel and thy rod wherein thou smotest the river. Take in thy hand and go. 
Y'all still with me? Okay, you can say amen so I'll know you out there. Good, good. Behold, I will stand before you there upon the rock in Horeb, and thou shalt smite the rock, and there shall come water out of it. I mean, y'all know it's a different way to get water. But it means something. It means something. I want you to catch this. Water is going to come out of the rock when you hit it. That the people may drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. 1 Corinthians 10 tells us that that rock represented Christ. And you know what it represented? It represented your sins and my sins being upon him and him being buffeted with our punishment in order for us to receive living water. That rock Represented Jesus. What was Moses told to do on this one? Smite the rock. Hit it. He was wounded for my transgressions. He was bruised for my iniquities. The chastisement of my peace was upon him. And with his stripes, I am healed. He bore my griefs and my sorrows. He took my punishment. And right here, water is about to flow. Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. He called the name of the place Massa and Meribah. Because of the shining of the children of Israel and because they tempted the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? You ever had, you ever had to deal with that thought process? Is the Lord with me or not? I, 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 I'm, I'm noticing something. Some of you are acting as though you've never been there. I know some of you have been. To where you have wondered, is the Lord with me on this one or is he not? Here's the answer. He is with you because he will never leave you nor forsake you. He is a very present help in the time of trouble. And you know right now, if the Lord was looking through the congregation, he would know those who trust him no matter what. Now, the Lord came to me by the Spirit of God when I was praying for the upcoming election. Yes, and the Lord spoke this to me. You're going to have to teach my people how to come up under my covering greater than ever before because of what is getting ready to happen in this nation. This nation will not remain the same. On one hand, you got those that are leaning totally toward disruption and destruction. On the other hand, you have those that will not budge or will not move or will not, will not relent. You, the believer, have to come up under the covering of the Almighty God. You can't depend upon a party. You can't depend upon a man. You can't depend upon a woman. You've got to depend upon Almighty God. 
And if there was ever a time to use your faith, it's right now. Hallelujah. I'm coming up under the covering of God more than ever before. Y'all, y'all, y'all remember this, right? Number one, what did I tell you? He gives me divine protection. Number two, what did I tell you? He supplies all my needs. Matter of fact, whenever the thought process breaks down to where I think that maybe it's not happening, go back and read these. Number three, what? He what? He gives me favor on every hand. Why do people treat you different? Because you're under the covering of God. Huh? Rather than, rather than them responding to you, they're responding to who has you covered. And God has you covered. Favor is not something you got to hope for when you're under the covering of God. Number four. How many of y'all can receive that? Hallelujah. Number five. Oh, we're going to see about that today, about the angels encamped round about you in all your ways, all your endeavors, everywhere you go. You may cannot see them, but they're there. Next one. Wealth of the wicked finding its way into your hand. I'm going to make a statement, and I hope you get it. If I can believe to come up under the covering of God, it will not require great faith to take the wealth of the wicked. If I'm under God's covering, I'm positioned correctly. So it just finds its way into my hand. Next one. I don't know how you can get more than that. Hallelujah. He won't only be your Lord, he'll be your best friend. And how many of y'all know he's a friend that sticks closer than a brother? How many of y'all know that he's a friend when everybody else departs? He's a friend that will stay up with you all night. He's a friend that will be there when you open your eyes. He's a friend that will carry you when you don't feel like you can go another step. He's a friend. Indeed. Now, that was the last one. And those are the ones that you're going to study under part one of under the covering of God. Let me just read a little bit. Where am I at? Verse 8. Then came Amalek and fought with Israel in Rephidim. Anybody ever had this happen? You get a miracle on one hand, and then here comes an enemy on the other hand. Huh? Glory to God. God meets all your needs on Monday and Tuesday the car breaks down. Huh? And man, that money that you had saved up because God gave you favor has now got to be used to buy a battery. Israel Get water, and a new enemy shows up. Then came Amalek and fought with Israel in Rephidim. And Moses said to Joshua, Choose out men and go out. Fight with Amalek. Tomorrow, 
I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. Now, how many of y'all know that rod has already gotten water? So how many of y'all know their faith is high? They're believing that this rod can do anything. So Joshua did as Moses had said to him and fought with Amalek. And Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. Priestly anointing and the prophetic anointing goes with the apostle. There's an apostolic anointing, Moses. There's a priestly anointing, Aaron. And there's a prophetic anointing, Hur. Because when you, when you trace where Hur came from, you'll find out that he was of the tribe of Judah. Now, So Joshua did as Moses had said to him, and he fought with Amalek. And Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. It came to pass, when Moses held up his hand, that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek, Prevail. But Moses' hands were heavy. Now, when I was reading this, God spoke to me and said, You read that so fast, but you don't ask the question. He said, Who was writing this book? I said, Moses. And he said, if anybody knew how heavy his hands were, it was him. There's a lot of people around you right this morning that don't know how heavy the fight that you're going through. Christian people learn how to, how do I say it? They learn how to crack on people who they feel like it's your job to convict them. So you take the place of the Holy Ghost for a few minutes because you think it's you that should convict them. Where's your joy? Well, I'm fighting the good fight of faith. Well, the joy of the Lord is your strength, you know. Well, where's your joy? Next week, when you are fighting the good fight of faith, where is your joy? And some of God's children remind you that you ain't supposed to be sick until they get sick. And then they want everybody to pray for me. Moses' hands were heavy. Boy, do I know how this means. Do I know what it means? I, don't, I just don't have the responsibility of leading this church. I've got to stay in the spirit to cover churches all over the nation. I mean, I understand that you're helping me, but you got to understand that if Amalek is coming after anybody, he's going to come after me. But Moses' hands were heavy. Didn't mention anybody else's hands. And they took a stone 
put it under him. He set their own, and Aaron and Hur stayed up his hands, the one on the one side and the other on the other side, and his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. You know what? I don't care who you are. I don't care how great you think you are. I don't, have, I don't care how much you think you are anointed. You're going to need others to help you keep your hands up. Huh? And you don't need those who are going to criticize, mock you when your hands get heavy. Well, what's wrong with you today? You need to rise up. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. That's not a her, and that definitely is not an Aaron that's talking to you. That is Beelzebub. Now, Moses is in a desperate place because if Israel does not defeat Amalek, Amalek is going to take all of Israel slaves. Somehow, he's got to keep his hands up. What do they represent? Full surrender. What, does, what do they represent? Praise. Adoration. Thanksgiving to God. What do they represent? In God I trust. And no matter what we're going through, God is going to give us the victory. Somebody's got to keep his hands up. And I don't see anywhere in here that Aaron or her ever said, Moses, you got to keep your hands up. They just kept his hands up. Whose hands are you keeping up today? Well, I'm preaching good now. Whose hands are you assisting? Whose hands are you helping to get the victory? But let me read on. Because you're going to see why I'm talking about the covering. Now, Moses' hands are up. Why? Because he's assisted by Aaron and her. And they keep his hands up. And I want you to watch what happened. And Joshua discomfited Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. Sometimes when people call themselves getting on me because I don't come to every event that's going on, I may not come to a compassion dinner. I may not come to something else. I want you to understand why. I've taught you how to help me keep my hands up. And I'm depending on you to do your job in order for us to get the victory. God does not give the victory to a solo individual. We either get it together or we lose it together. I tell everybody around me, especially those that, that gain their income from the ministry, if you don't pray for the church to prosper and then you stand to receive from the church, then you are in total error. And I'm going to tell you what will happen. And you will prosper 
on one hand, and on the other hand, you will not prosper. And the Lord said to Moses, now this is where this gets really strong. Write this for a memorial in a book and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua. For I will utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. And Moses built an altar and called the name of it. In your Bible, it has Jehovah when it should be Yahovah. Yahovah Nisi. The substitution with the J was in actuality an erroneous interpretation. He is Yahovah Nisi because he is your Yahweh. I ain't hear none. I said I ain't hear none. Somebody ought to say he's my Yahweh. Yes. <laughs> That's right, Charles. Yahweh is his name. And, and I'm told, I'm told this, but you're going to change it after November the 5th. I'm told this. It don't make no difference what you call God. He hears you. Well, I'm going to tell you this. It's going to matter in the days to come because he's going to place his name upon you and that's how all seven of those things are going to cover you. Why do you think? Why do you? Yes. Yes. What did you say, Pete? Yeah. Absolutely. And even worse. And now God is saying... Who's coming under my covering? Who's coming under my covering? Who will let me keep them safe? Can I read verse 15, 16 again? And Moses built an altar called the name of it Jehovah Nisi. For he said, because the Lord has sworn that the Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. The best interpretation of Amalek is giants. What are giants in our society right now? Because they, that's exactly right, they are what you and I are called to stand against. Yes, sir. We stand against, and I'm probably going to be on TV with this, so let them hear me. We stand against same-sex marriages. Right. Y'all might as well say amen, because they don't scan, scan you anyway. We stand against homosexuality and lesbianism being announced as normal activity. It is activity that God loves you so much that he will set you free from. We stand against the innocent babies being aborted. We stand against government taking over our lives. We stand against social media tracking us, spying on us. I got me one. I got me two. Who will say 
I'm a witness. We stand against the perversion that is being counted in our schools. We stand against them trying to change the gender of our kids. We stand against anything that tries to minimize God and maximize man. We stand against all of these things because God has chosen us and put a covering over us. Now, what am I preaching on this morning? Come on, tell me. Okay, now, I'm going to have me 15 more minutes. I'm going to preach. Lord, let me get a chair. I'm going to preach the rest of it. I want you to go to Psalm 91. Psalm 91. I'm coming. Pull it back a little bit. Under the covering of Almighty God. His covering is upon me. In everything that I do, on my household, on my children, on my children's children, that covering watches over them when I cannot watch over them. That covering protects them when I don't know where they are. In the mighty name of Jesus, and that covering causes Jesus to be my best friend. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Now, I, uh, I want to talk to Honey Rock. Are y'all listening to me? And for those of you that are watching me, here's what I'm going to send you. Here's what I want you to do for the next seven days. I want you to put down these chapters that you're going to read. Psalm 91. Psalm 91. Psalm 34. Psalm 34. I'm repeating it. Psalm 91, Psalm 34, Psalm 37, Psalm 37, y'all got it. Psalm chapter one, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor sitteth in the seat of the scorners, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his word, our law, does he meditate? You know what? God loved us so much, he sent that song to this body. Glory to God. And you know the power that was on it. Psalm 91, what else? Psalm 30 what? 34. 37, Psalm 1, Psalm 112, Psalm 112, thank you Lord God. Let me tell you how powerful this word was that God sent to you today. I have not taken one note to preach it. All of it has come out of my spirit. God deposited inside me. It lodged in me and now is coming out to you. Amen. Glory to God. I asked God, I said, can I write some of this down? He said, no, I have them write it down. He said, you just preach it. You open up the vault of my deposit and you let flow what I put inside you. Oh, I heard that. I heard that. 
See, under his covering, his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law does he meditate. You know why he meditates? Because he loves it. Anything you love is not a burden for you to enjoy. Hallelujah. I, I, I just use this, it's carnal, but it, 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 it will prove the point. Have you ever had a TV show that you just loved it? You don't have to say amen. You don't have to raise your hand. Yeah, yeah, uh, so, somebody who is super spiritual may see you do it, but uh, that's okay. I just want to get the point out, okay? You with me? I mean, y'all know I wouldn't no burden to get into that. Ain't no burden set under God's word. Psalm 91. I'm not going to read it all, but I got a couple of verses I want to read. Okay? I'm only going to be obedient to tell you what God told me. One of the greatest protections you have under the covering of God is the day that God blessed and sanctified. I know they're going to say you're crazy for observing, remembering the Sabbath day and keeping it whole. I know, I know. You know, people have come to me and have told me, Brother Jerry, we could make so much money if we kept the stores open on Saturday. Like everybody else, they would come from everywhere because they're off work. God told me in the beginning not to do it. And all I'm trying to be is obedient. I know that in the natural, thousands and thousands of dollars are being missed, but listen to me. Everything that you think you miss, God will make it up some other way. Yes, he will. You ain't lost nothing. You're special to God. Psalm 91. You got them five down? I want you to let them loose this week. Thank you, Lord. Now, the name that I used this morning is Jehovah Nisi. The Lord is not a banner. Not even, well, yes, he is ours. But I'm going to take it farther. He is my banner. Now, what does that mean? That means that I got all seven of those things I gave you working for me every day of my life. They're working for me every day of my life. And the more that I increase in knowing them, the more they'll work for me. Hallelujah. Y'all know, know how much I believe it? I don't care what I'm seeing in the natural. If God told me that he is my banner, then he is my banner. Yes. Psalm 91. Okay, we're going to catch up with Angie. All right. Y'all ready? Verse 1. Yes. What will, okay, if I dwell... In the secret place of the Most High, I'll come under his covering. Read on. Yes. Will I trust? Come on. Yes. He shall cover me with what? Yes. And and what under? And it said under his wings. Come on. 
Yes. Yes. Why? Yes. 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 But what? Why? Because you are covered. Come on. Yes. 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 No evil will befall me. Neither shall any plague come nigh my dwelling. Yes. Yeah. Come on. Yes. Because you set your love upon me. What? Yes. He'll set you on high. Yeah. Yeah. Long life. Show him my salvation. Now, I don't know if y'all caught that, but you were reading through it, and things were happening for you. Uh, uh, no. Uh, thank you. Thank you. I was going through a storm recently. There were no answers in the natural to help me. So I was going through a storm, and I got this out. I told the Lord, I read this, not exaggerating, hundreds and hundreds of times. Preached it all over the country. Believed it. I said, now I need it. I said, because I've set my love upon you, you promised to deliver me. Said you would be with me in trouble. God said, when everything in the natural fails you, trust my word. Now, what do you have this morning? You got the word. Why is Psalm 91 so special? God gave this to us too. No, some of y'all didn't, didn't hear me. God gave us this through a song. You know what God was doing? I know Stan has told us, but I won't tell you with what he said. God was actually placing a deposit of his word in us through mu music. You know, it's easy to go along and say, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. <laughs> it's easy to sing it even when you can't quote it. In the next three months of 2024, you're going to need that covering greater than you've ever had it before. Now, I got, I got to tell some of y'all something that y'all don't know, but I'm going to tell you. I'm usually prophetically 10 years ahead. I'm way out there. 
and then it catches up. I'm way out there. People will say, well, you said that 10 years ago. Well, it catch up. I won't give you something, and it's not 10 years out. In my lifetime that I've been alive, which Monday will be 70 years. In my lifetime since I've been alive, I have never been as close as I am now to the return of Jesus coming back. Now, I know, I know that people said I've been hearing that since I was a little boy. Well, the Bible says that there would be those that would be called scoffers in the last days that would say, where is his return? Hold up. All the signs are pointing, let me give it to you, upward. They're signaling something's coming. If there's ever been a time, Honey Rock, that we should be engaged with God. It's now. I refuse to be counted out after all this time. I do. No way. No way. I don't care what I have to face. Jesus happens to be, because of the covering I have over me, my best friend. And he's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. I had some good brothers in my family. I had, they, they always looked out for little, little man. I was a young one. And they all thought that that was special. I should not have even been born. My mother was through having kids. So God had one more reserve. See, it don't make no difference what those that brought you into this world have said about you. God fearfully and wonderfully made you. And God don't make no mistakes. Now, in my nation, that I've disagreed with some many things that have happened, but there's one thing I can truthfully say. I have never hated it. I do not hate it now. I am thankful that I was born here. I am. I could, I, I've been to Haiti. I know, um, I know I'm glad I was not born in Haiti. I'm even Ghana. I'm glad that I was not born in Ghana. All the nations that I have witnessed have not had the freedom that you and I have. They've not had the freedom. They've not had the provision. They've not had the favor. And they've not had the realization of what God has called us to be to other nations. Those five chapters I gave you, they're going to be your launching chapters. Now, they're, they're not your only chapters you got, but they're going to be five of, five of them that's going to help you no Jehovah Nisi, the Lord, your banner. Here's what I want you to do. You can take them separately, but I want you to get one of them out of your mouth every day. 
one of them. If you are ambitious, read them all. But at least read one and pray that Jesus come quickly. Well, Brother Upton, I've got some things that I still want to do. Listen to me. You're not going to forfeit them. Your destiny is going to follow you into the millennium. Yeah. Thank God for one believer. I said your purpose is going to follow you into the millennium. Why do you think God has a thousand more years added on after the earth age is over with? For you and me to rule and reign with him. Can you say amen? amen. Now who's coming under the banner? Come up here. Coming under the banner. Hallelujah. Now I'm going to ask you as you come. We'll see if you was with me. What's the banner I preached today? Yahovah Nisi. If you, if you still want to call him Jehovah, Nisi, that's fine. I'm just telling you the correct way. And I'm telling you something about the Sabbath. This is one special day. And, and let me tell everybody who will accuse me of being legalistic. It's amazing what you call legalistic when you don't want to do it. Most important service we have at Honey Rock is service. Because I remember the Sabbath and I keep it holy. Huh? Most, you know what? Don't tell me that days are not special with people Many people know who live in this country, especially who are into sports, they know what Saturdays are. They tailgate, they plan, they spend money. Even if they lose, they talk about how great a time they have. Here's what I'm going to do. There's a special blessing with me remembering the Sabbath and keeping it holy. Let me tell you all what it is. The special blessing is if I remember the Sabbath and keep it holy, God will remember me. I sow it and God lets me reap it back with him remembering me. And I don't know who you are, I need God to remember me. Come under the banner. That's right. That's right. That's right. Speak it. That's right. That's right. That's right. I heard Brandon speak that out loud. I'm under the banner. I'm under the banner. Come on. Let that come out of your mouth. That banner represents God's covering. I'm under it right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm covered. Protected. And I'm anointed. Hallelujah. I'm anointed. Now, if your family's not here with you, bring them under. Bring them under. I bring my family. Bring them under. Covering of Almighty God. Glory. 
Hallelujah. They join you right now. Yeah, yeah, they join you right now. Now, I'm not saying, I'm not saying that our other services that we have are not important to God, so don't go out and say I said that. But I'm telling you, and I don't have any reservation for it, I know that the most important service I do, let me make it that way, so nobody will get, will get messed up. Most important service I do is on the Sabbath. I remember the Sabbath and I keep it holy. I may be odd to some. I may be, they, I've been accused of being legalistic, uh, law and everything else. It's amazing to me. I have not mandated for not one of you to be here on Saturday. All I've done is presented. I've got three months coming into the new year. As a matter of fact, I've got less than that right now. I'm going, I'll be going into November. You will be too. Say, I don't believe in them, in those calendars. It don't make no difference if you believe in it. You're still going to go right by it when they come in here, November and December. And something is about to take place in my nation that I'm going to be divinely protected from any of it because I'm under, I'm under the banner. So raise your hand and thank God that he places it upon you even mightily. Thank God that he covers you in all your ways, all your children, all your family. Hallelujah, your destiny is covered. Your purpose is covered. Thank you, Lord God. The favor that you need is there. Hallelujah. Does it matter what army assembles against you? They are defeated before they even attack. Because you're under the covering of Almighty God. And I thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord. And I bless you this morning. In Jesus' name, amen.